joined Toastmasters just four weeks ago. Already a very successful tabletop speaker, tonight he'll entertain us with his certain to be rejuvenating icebreaker. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, it's kind of strange, because like, I was pretty nervous, even though I've been up here before. But, um, so today I'm going to talk about my three favorite topics, since this is the icebreaker. So, me, myself, and I. <laughs> <laughs> so, just a few quick facts about myself. Uh, I was delivered over yonder a couple miles by that woman right there about like 18-ish years ago, I'd have to say, in a guess, and uh, I don't really remember that, but it's probably fun. Um, <laughs> and then uh, after that, I have spent almost the entirety of my whole life in the same house in the mountains in Leavenworth, Washington, which is over yonder that way. So, the cool thing about where I have lived is it's pretty unique. We live in a place where you, if you wanted to, you could go outside in your underwear and shoot a gun if you felt like it. Not saying I have done that, I'm <laughs> just saying that's a possibility. I'm going to quit embarrassing my mom. And then uh, some other fun facts about my house and my, myself is my brother and I were big fans of Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter. So because of that, we liked animals a little too much, perhaps. I distinctly remember my mom saying, no snakes in the house. <laughs> so we put them in the garage. <laughs> a few years later, now there's like, what, three, three snakes, but about like five feet from her bedroom. So uh, I'm a bit persuasive is another fact about myself. But we're going to cut that usual stuff. I could talk about my house and how awesome my pets are for ages, because they are awesome. But I am really going on the um counter on this. <laughs> so my story changes from your average mountain-dwelling, reptile-collecting child in my junior year, which I spent abroad in the country of Hungary. I think I've brushed on this fact a little bit. But I just wanted to say that that experience was truly life-changing. And I, it's so weird living at, it, from where I could just stay in a house, go outside, shoot a gun in my underwear, to where I lived in an apartment building in a massive city of 15,000 people, which, to me, is a pretty, pretty big city. So I lived in three different host families there. I tried to learn the language, spoke decent chunks of it. Here's just a little quick introduction. Sziasztok, Nikolai Magyok, and Harakai Cserediakok. So, imagine stuff like that. Eight, ten hours a day, every day, with no preparation. So I just, I tried to focus on it, but I did end up spending most of my time uh, doing what I usually do in normal school and daydreaming. So, that was a very interesting experience, and then I also got to travel all around Europe, Rome, Prague, but the, and London, which is my personal favorite, because museums are free and pretty entertaining there. Fast forward a little bit from being totally out, disconnected from the United States, at least my social circle, other than my family, I had no contact with anyone plopped me right back in my senior year, and you find a much different Nikolai. Because a side effect of living in what some would call the middle of nowhere is you don't really have neighbors. So I didn't have the best social skills at home, uh, and I was kind of the shy kid. And then, uh, as you can tell, my voice volume increases a lot as I start talking. Maybe it's because I like the sound of my own voice. Maybe I'm more confident, not too sure. But, ooh, I'm going to break in the record on this, probably. Uh, fast forwarding from my exchange, going back home, it's been quite an interesting year so far. And in the spirit of today, like waiting for summer, 
I am clearly dressed appropriately. <laughs> and soon I will be starting my new profession as a lifeguard. I was going to bring my belt thing, except I accidentally locked that in my car with my keys. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. And um, I believe that pretty much brings me to today. So thank you for bearing with my um, slightly nerve-wracked presentation. And uh, thank you very much. I would like to excuse myself to make a phone call to try to get my dad to get me in my spare key. So <laughs> thank you so much. All right.